Nearly a month following our first biome guide, I think it is time to continue the series. And judging by where we sit, I guess we're talking birch, coons, and shrooms, everyone. The deciduous forest is one of the best biomes around. So let's get to it. As to the where's and how's of the biome actually spawning, really the only thing I can say is that many worlds you'll spawn will very likely generate at least two full deciduous forests, and we'll discuss the fat reason for that soon enough. For now, let's just focus on birch nut trees. You can certainly find these nutters in the grasslands, but they truly reside here. As you'd imagine, they also have tiers of growth like our evergreens, so anticipate one, two, three logs from felling them. But what really concerns me are these birch nuts and how they drop. In autumn, birch nut leaves are colored be it red, orange, or yellow, and will drop two birch nuts when felled. But in the spring and summer seasons, the leaves of the trees are green, and but one birch nut will come from chopping. And then come winter, you ain't getting nothing but wood from these guys. But do note, you gotta chop them in their largest tier for them to drop the nuts in general. But it ain't all sunshine and nuts, everyone. Day three worlds and beyond can see the spawning of Poison birch nut trees, the tree guardians of these particular trees and this biome. And don't starve together, the chance of one spawning is very dependent on the season and day survived as seen here. But what exactly are these dudes all about? Well, not much actually, as even killing them provides a potential three living logs. It is not guaranteed. But do note, the little birch nutters that they'll spawn to come get ya, and this tentacle attack that will slap you silly if you ain't careful. You can't actually attack a poison birch nut tree, but rather have to axe it 18 times for it to die. But honestly, I choose to just burn them and move on, simply walk away for a bit to have them despawn, or plant birch nuts to pass by them. Because until you have far enough into a world to farm them efficiently with weather pains, they just ain't worth the trouble in my opinion. I would, however, advise having befriended pigs, or now merms with ya, to all also make the murder process far more easier and much more efficient. How about them birch nuts themselves? Obviously, you can replant them for more birch nut trees, similar to how we replant pine cones for more evergreens, but there is a recipe out there that comes from these nuts that simply must be known. Trail mix. Easily whipped up, it provides 30 health, 12.5 hunger, and 5 sanity a munch. This biome is a trail mix making machine, so take advantage. Oh, and oh yeah, a little addition here. Trail mix also goes into adopting giblet from the rock den, so there you go. To continue, the deciduous forest is fully capable of housing red, blue, and green mushrooms all at once, which makes it the only biome up above capable of such a thing. It's unique and insanely helpful, obviously, as blue caps can serve as healers, green caps as sanity restorers, and red caps as veggie fillers for all your meals. Shrooms for days, my friends. Shrooms for days. Another unique feature of this biome are the fireflies. No, not the fireflies themselves, obviously. It's the amount of them. There are far more numerous in our deciduous forests than anywhere else in our world. So if you're looking to catch the suckers, you now know where to go. But why would you though? Well, really just for crafting and refueling the miner hat if you have one, remaining festive with the pumpkin lanterns, or completely wasting them on Winona's spotlight. But do note that one can just simply catch and release fireflies anywhere they wish to provide light sources all about. And this is pretty nifty for any base, but especially cave basing. But how about more exclusives, like the hollowed stumps? Hollowed stumps only spawn in deciduous forests and house what are known as cat coons. Each only hold a single cat coon, but something unique occurs following the cat coon's death. 
Well, ninth death, actually. Cacoons respawn from their stumps every couple days, so it will take a while, but kill one nine times and its stump will truly become hollow. You can then hammer it for twigs and logs, but I would just leave it, as for many, many days later, they actually do regenerate within Don't Starve Together, unlike in Solo Don't Starve. But speaking of hammering, though, you can also do this to normal stumps for a select choice of of loot as seen here, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Cacoons can be very useful to ya. Cacoons are neutral creatures for the most part, but will kill plenty of smaller critters dotted about. However, you Weber and or Wartox players best be careful around these guys, cause they'll not take kindly to you. They can, however, be befriended by everyone else though. One can use simple twigs, grass, petals, or perhaps them birch nuts we have to befriend them, or we can just shove the occasional fish down their gullets. Whatever the case, what you see here is what you'll potentially get regardless. Honestly, some pretty darn good stuff can come from feeding these cats, but it's up to you whether the process is worth it, because you do gotta wait for their hairballs each time. And oh yeah, befriended cat coons don't like unbefriended ones, and vice versa. Be careful to leave trinkets around them, as they'll steal them right from under your nose, and note the meat drop plus a 33% chance at a cat tail upon their death. Cat tails go into three things. The cat cap, which is a winter clothing item with only 60 insulation, so it is completely worthless. The adoption of kitty kit from the rock den, which is also debatably worthless. And the unique tail 03 cat, a ranged weapon that has 175 uses, does 27.2 damage, and has a chance to pacify animals, monsters, and even bosses for a very short time. Is it unique? Very much so. Is it worth it? Nope. As we might already know, this biome is also home to Glomer and her statue. Chances are it's near the picking, and we've also got a 75% chance of having a pan flute nearby as well. But what exactly is she? Well, Glomer is a passive mob that only spawns during full moons at said statue here. You can then take her flower in order to have her folia just like Chester would if we had his eye bone. And as a follower, Glamour provides a sanity bonus of 6.25 per minute when shoving your face in the places you likely shouldn't be. And she goes goops every two to four days. Glamour goop can be eaten for 40 health, nearly 10 hunger, but minus 50 sanity each, so use it in emergencies. It can be used as a great fuel for fires, equal to that of boards, is equivalent of manure while fertilizing, or can be used to adopt glom glom and thus steal Glomer's baby for your own, and that's absolutely wonderful. Oh, and killing Glomer also raises your naughtiness by 50 points instantly, so crap I be coming for you friends, so get that sack. As alluded to previously, the reason for two separate biomes is this guy right frickin' here. The fat man himself, the Pig King. He typically spawns in grasslands, yes, but said grasslands can certainly and will be at the start of deciduous biomes or smack dab within them. If you're looking for them, then I'd certainly sniff around the birch nut first. And oh yeah, expect plenty of pig houses dotted about this biome too as a result. But two last notes, both involving the white stuff more or less. Come winter, the loot stash can and will spawn in either the mosaic or deciduous biome. So keep an eye out if you're looking to murder an evil Santa this Christmas. But of course, if you want his sack, you gotta find a key. And the no idea are exactly that. Like the loot stash, they too can be found in the deciduous or mosaic biomes. But they begin to spawn come a few days in autumn so perhaps locate them quickly. Just learn more by watching any of our numerous claws videos. Hold up, one last mention. Mole worms are pretty darn common within this biome as well, so have at them in any way you please. Just don't lose your valuables along the way. But there you have it everyone, the deciduous forest biome and all 
all its relative tameness, but essential existence. Again, it's one of the better biomes around in terms of practicality, and can serve you very well if you have the information needed to exploit it. So it's a good bloody thing that you just watched the whole video about it now, ain't it? Thanks for that, folks. Well wishes to you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.